Hi there, super scientists. We're going to be looking at all the water on Earth, fresh water and ocean salt water as well. So you'll go ahead and look at your lab notebook. We'll get started. So water covers about 75% of our surface. That's about three quarters of our surface. So why do we need water? Water is really important. But why is water important? Well, we use water for a lot of different things. Animals and plants use water for a lot of different things as well. Water is necessary for a lot of processes that take place in our body. Hydration is important, and you have probably heard that you should drink a lot of water. You should hydrate your cells. Uh, plants are especially going to need water for photosynthesis. That's why their vacuoles are so much larger, because they can store a lot of water, and they need to store a lot of water for photosynthesis to take place. It's one of the reactants for photosynthesis. We need water to drink. Animals need water to drink. Uh, animals including us, we're going to need those plants to eat as well. So we need fruits and vegetables. So we need those plants to be healthy and to grow in order for us to have food. And a lot of organisms use water or aquatic areas as a habitat. And you can see a little alligator here and the anemone. Um, the sea anemone that you see there is Nemo's home. So the map that we see here is a map of the earth and you can see all the different oceans. So we call them different oceans like Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Indian Ocean. Um, you can see Pacific Ocean on this side, um, the other part of it, Arctic Ocean, uh, Antarctic or Southern Ocean down here. But really it's all one connected ocean. So they're not separated by dams or by some kind of partition. It's all one ocean. 97% of Earth's water is salt water. So if it is salt water, then that means it's going to be in the ocean. So 97% of Earth's water is in the oceans. It is salt. So looking at this pie chart here, this is really important because this is something that you are probably going to have questions on in your EOG or pie chart, some kind of data to analyze. Only 3% of Earth's water is fresh water. So 97% of Earth's water is salt, only 3%. Only 3% of Earth's water is fresh water. And most of that fresh water is going to be stored in ice or glacier. So that means that most of the fresh water on Earth is going to be frozen. Now, if you look at this pie chart, this is showing you that there's our 97%. So that's our salt water that's stored in oceans. And here's our tiny little pie piece of fresh water. So of that fresh water, you can see that broken down here, 76% of that fresh water is frozen. Again, ice, glaciers, permafrost, polar ice caps, that kind of thing. Groundwater makes up the second largest percentage of the fresh water. So for groundwater, um, that's going to include shallow groundwater and then deeper groundwater. So this might be what you have as an aquifer that could be a water source for different places. And then lakes and rivers, water vapor in the atmosphere make up smaller amounts. So the largest part of fresh water is going to be frozen. The water cycle. So the hydrologic cycle is another name for the water cycle. Hydro means water. So the water cycle is just a continuous process that takes place on the earth. And it just kind of delineates how water travels from the earth's surface and uh, underground in the water, uh, stored in aquifers and that kind of thing back up into the atmosphere. So just how water travels on earth. So there are three main steps of the water cycle, and I'm sure you know them, evaporation, condensation, and uh, precipitation. So we're going to break those down uh, really quickly. Evaporation, we've talked about before when we were studying chemistry. So evaporation is going to be when the molecules get hot enough that they will turn from a liquid into a gas, and that specific gas is called water vapor. So water, when it's a gas, is called water vapor. Transpiration is a specific type of evaporation that happens in plants or happens from plants. So transpiration is water that exits a plant through the leaves, through those holes that are called stomata. So not only do leaves um, in their stomata allow for carbon dioxide to enter, but it allows for oxygen and water vapor to exit the leaf as well. So transpiration is just a type of evaporation that specifically happens through plants. 
Condensation is second one. So that's when water vapor cools down. So you have that gas water vapor and it cools down. The molecules start moving slower so that it will turn back into a liquid. And when that happens, when the water vapor cools down into a liquid up in the atmosphere, um, around condensation nuclei or little bits of particulate matter like dust and smoke, then it can form clouds. And then precipitation is the third part of the water cycle. So that's where water falls to the earth as rain, sleet, snow, or hail. So we have snow, which we all love because that means we can get out of school sometimes. And then these are hailstones. And hailstones are really interesting because the larger they get, uh, that just indicates they've basically bounced up and down in clouds uh, because of updrafts or more severe wind burst so that just makes them larger so they basically kind of melt a little bit and then refreeze as they're bounced up and down in clouds um, further up in the atmosphere. Then there are a couple other parts that aren't considered necessarily your three main steps but they're associated with the water cycle because their parts um, are descriptions of how water moves into our surface or on the ground. So runoff is one thing and you see that a lot around our area when you have a lot of rain. So runoff is just water that's not absorbed. It's not absorbed by the soil and it just flows over the land. So this is a picture of runoff. And basically you can think of that as big puddles of water that are kind of moving downhill. So all of this that you see in this picture, that's all runoff. And generally it's just moving downhill. We'll go into a storm drain or we'll end up in a river a lot of times. Infiltration is where water is just moving into the ground. So you see that in this picture here. It's raining and all that water is just soaking down into the ground and will become part of the groundwater, becomes part of the underground aquifer. And groundwater literally is just water underground. So it's water that's stored beneath the earth surface. So it's stored, um, as you can see in this picture, and literally it's just water that's underground and that groundwater will be part of the aquifer your stem aqua referring to water so that groundwater can be pumped up in wells and used as drinking sources